Hey guys, it's Chris Bercher with Knowledge Plus Experience Equals Wisdom. This is episode 47, Changing Behavior Changes Beliefs. So there's a lot in this and there's really not much in this. I've been thinking a lot lately about how simple the tenets of personal growth really are. When you boil it all down, there's a couple of fundamental things you can do that are going to have the biggest and most dramatic difference. And the hard part about it is it's deceptively simple to say, but much harder to actually do. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. And a lot of, I think, what people, me, um, you maybe, want to do is is change the way we look at at the world to change our automatic responses to situations that, again, are built on these old things that we learned when we were young as defense mechanisms or coping mechanisms or whatever to deal with situations. And now that we're adults, they don't work so well anymore. Or maybe even young adults or late teenagers, uh, maybe you're already realizing that these things don't work as well as you need them to because the situations are different, you're different, and you've learned a little bit and you, you know better, but you still continue to apply these sort of gut reactions that you were learned as a kid. And, and an example I always use is maybe uh, you're a comedian and you learned as a kid that being funny uh, took the attention off you and you didn't get picked on as much if you could make people laugh. And then as an adult, you sort of use comedy as a coping mechanism and maybe even in situations where it really isn't appropriate uh, or maybe you know you, you've come to understand that you make jokes of everything and you make light of everything and maybe that's not really the way uh, that you need to deal with some of this tr- real adult trauma that's to come up into your life. I think it's a classic example that a lot of comedians have deep-seated sort of personal issues and possibly because they learned how to be funny as a coping mechanism. Anyway, that's just an example. Um, what I want to really get into today is how the, the basic tenet, and, and first, these last few episodes, I'm sort of building up to episode 50, which is a milestone of sorts, if you choose for it to be. It's just a number. But for me, it's a milestone. It'll be about a year of doing the podcast. And around episode 50, I'm, I'm, I'm gearing up to make a concerted shift toward trying to, to summarize these thoughts into a series of books and related products. And what I want to do is the first 50 episodes have sort of narrowed my focus a little bit. There's been some repetitive themes, and I want to pull those repetitive themes out and try to to, 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 to integrate them into a, some cohesive ideas. And so uh, starting with episode 50, I'll introduce the, the general concept, and then with each successive episode, I'll try to focus on a tenet of these books, and we'll sort of see where it goes so that I can use that inertia to work on the book and then to use the podcast to share the thoughts and the development of the book. And uh, anyway, so these things will be kind of in parallel that, that it'll just, just help me sort of organize my thinking to the next level. You know, it's taken 50 episodes <laughs> to organize it from crazy scattered <laughs> to some sort of uh, cohesion. Anyway, and so these episodes are sort of building up with things like values and time management. Um, and today's really just going to focus on The idea of intellectual knowledge and then sort of behavioral knowledge. So, uh, you know, with respect to behavior, I'm talking about actions, the things that we do, our physical selves, and and that linkage to our brains. You know, our, our brains allow us to move around or to react a certain way or to... Uh, elicit certain behaviors at certain times to meditate, exercise, whatever it is, react. And then our our beliefs are our our mind. And it's sort of this melding of the brain and the body. And what I've learned after 10 years of sort of brain therapy, I realized I really wasn't getting anywhere. And then with a couple of different coaching techniques and and coaches, I've learned and I haven't made the shift yet, that I, I, I know <laughs> enough. <laughs> you know, I've lear- relearned the same things over and over again, but they're not manifesting themselves in my behaviors and my habits because I haven't incorporated those ideas, those mental thoughts into my actions. And, and I've been trying to over about the last three to six months, and I've noticed some some serious changes. And, and, uh, so it's really about making the shift from thinking to doing, 
or from thoughts to action, or however you want to think it. You've heard this a million times. And uh, a, a big game changer for me was sort of was James Clear's Atomic Habits book. And it's not like this is anything new, or that you know James Clear invented the idea that you know to to change your brain, to change your thinking, you have to change your behavior. Um, but he but he put it together in a really good way. It's a really approachable book. It starts off the first 30 or 40 pages, introduce some real simple concepts and some diagrams, such as, you know, the, the diminishing returns and compounding interest. If you decrease a behavior by 1% a day, in 100 days, you've gone from 100 to zero. But if you add... 1% change a day, you compound that interest exponentially from 101 to 102 to 103 to 100 and so, and so on. Or actually, it's 100 to 101 and then 101 to whatever 1% of 101 is, and you see how this compounds rather than be linear. Anyway, Mr. Clear says it a whole lot better than I do. The idea is that tiny incremental changes over time are going to result in long-term differences in your behaviors, much more so than trying to do dramatic things. And I was always the guy who was like, I'm going to start working out in six months or three months, I'm going to look like Brad Pitt. And you know, that that's just not <laughs> how it works, especially for me. And it's really much more easy to say. A good example, I think James Clear might have used this example, or maybe it was somebody else, of a guy who was overweight and he really wanted to work out, but he was kind of afraid of the gym and the whole thing. I mean, Going from being a really sedentary person to being a person who exercises regularly is a huge, dramatic shift in your day-to-day behavior. And what this guy did is he got a gym membership, and he would simply go to the gym on his way to work. And he'd walk in, and he'd look around, and he'd leave. And he built that habit. And then after a certain amount of time, I don't know if it was 30 days or two months, it wasn't quick. He realized, you know what? I'm here. I might as well work out. And he'd already made the habit of getting there. And now he just had to add the habit of working out for five minutes a couple times. And that builds and that builds. And so I've tried to implement that into making some changes in behaviors in my life. And I have a list of things. Again, after 10 years of therapy and thinking and and doing all these things, I came up with a list of things that I wanted to add to my life that I've been told or I learned or that people say are going to be beneficial in changing my belief system. And so the idea is that If you change an action, you can build a habit. Uh, You can, uh, and within that habit, that behavior will then change your neurology, which will then change your thoughts, which will change your beliefs. And so that's the way I'm looking at this. And instead of trying to think my way into changing my brain, which makes sense. I'm going to do what everybody says is better and try to act my way into changing my brain. Um, and so it's, it's action versus thoughts. It's doing versus your intellect. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a brain versus body thing. And, and really it's not a versus thing at all. It's melding these two things. One of my probably most significant experiences in therapy, coaching, personal growth, whatever, is in understanding that my body communicates with me and our bodies communicate with us. And it doesn't all have to get filtered through our brains. And there's actually what Don Miguel Ruiz calls silent knowledge inherent in ourselves. And maybe it's, surely it's part of the brain, but it's not in the, the thinking system that we're typically, we don't talk to ourselves through this. In fact, through meditation and silence and active listening, our bodies will communicate with us. And I've had some pretty, now that I'm able to do, to, to believe that that's possible and to have experienced it and to have, have seen the dramatic sort of effect of listening to my body can, can do, I really want more of that. And so I'm starting to become more willing to accept I'm not saying I'm a believer, but I'm you know open to the idea that if I can change my behaviors, I can actually change my brain. Because the changing my brain through thinking didn't work, right? So I'm looking for a different approach. And so following the one percent rule of James Clear, what I did, you know, looking at my values, which I talked about, I guess a couple times episodes ago, uh, and and some of these other elements of personal growth, I said, what's this? What's the set of things that I don't do? 
that I could add. And these are things like meditating, journaling, being, uh, going, having some sort of gratitude ritual, um, having a schedule. Uh, so my time is planned so that I have, uh, I am intentional with how I spend my time. This is the big one I haven't added yet that I'm struggling with is daily affirmations. And I always think of Stuart Smalley from Saturday Night Live. I'm good enough. I'm smart enough. And doggone it, people like me. That sounds absurd. It was presented to me as comedy. But I'm starting to think that that kind of talking, action, talking out loud to the mirror or whatever, may actually do this thing where we change our action, we change our habits, we change our beliefs, we change our neurology, we change our thoughts, we change our beliefs, our behavior, our neurology, thoughts and beliefs. Why not? Can't hurt. You know, what's the damage in doing something good for ourselves every day? Now, if you look at that big giant and then exercise, I don't know which, let me go through the list again, just in case. So it's habit, uh, meditation, journaling, scheduling, exercise, affirmations. And sure, if I sat down, if I if you realize this, watch this episode and go, oh, I need to do all these things. That's an overwhelming a whole whole lot of behavioral changes that you need to add. Just the time involved. If even if you did each one of those things for five minutes, that's a half an hour a day. You don't want to do that. Where I made mistakes in the past is go, all right, I've got to do this two hours a day, seven days a week, starting tomorrow. That's not how it works. What you need to do is you go, maybe I'll write these six words down and I'll look at that list five days a week or whatever it is. Um, and so there's, there's what I've been able to do in my life in the last, I guess, six months is to add meditation, started off with three minutes, went up to five, did it three, four days a week, set a goal of five minutes a day, five days a week, got to that. And now what I do is I set my timer for 20 minutes, five days a week, after I drop my daughter off at school, on my way to whatever I'm going to do next, to go work on houses or come back and do this or mow the grass, I pull over, set my timer, and I'll meditate for 10 to 15 minutes. I usually don't make it the whole 20 minutes. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But I've been able to do that now regularly for three or four months, four to five days a week, and I don't beat myself up. You know, it's like I I quit drinking soda, side note, and I had a soda the other day in my Third daughter's like, oh my God, dad. And I'm like, it's okay. It's not like I'm an alcoholic. I had one soda, one eight ounce soda. I'm not going to now kick in that whole habit again. It's like this all or none thinking just sets us up for failure. But anyway, so that's how I did that. I knew I needed to add exercise. I've thought about this for years. I didn't really have a way to do it. I didn't see where it fit into my schedule because it's, you know, 35, 40 minutes um, is the program that I wanted to do. And I found one that was only four days a week and I thought it was doable, discussed it with my wife, decided to get up about 45 minutes earlier than anybody else to interrupt their schedule. So it didn't mess up my wife's morning routine. It didn't mess up any of my daughter's morning routines. Yeah, it's hard. Um, and my wife doesn't like to wake up to my alarm. So we got her some sleep earbuds so that now she doesn't wake up when my alarm goes off. So anyway, we've we figured all of that out. And now for, oh man, so 20 weeks now, I've been exercising four days a week. And uh, I feel a lot better about that. Um, and, and I'm not bragging. I'm just saying it, it took a lot to figure out how it was going to work. And then I just had to do it. And exercising was the hardest because, you know, I, it, is a, it is a regimen. You know, it, it is... It, 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 I had, I've done enough exercise in the past to know I didn't want to just try one or two minutes a day. This was something I was going to have to nail. And it was difficult. It wasn't like meditation. That was a lot easier to do because I could find the time wherever. I could do it for three minutes and then slowly build. But what you find out is you like it and you miss it. And if I would go out of town for a few days or whatever and fall off the wagon um, for whatever reason, I just got right back on where I left off. None of the No beating myself up, no thinking about it, just realizing that trying to do it and, and sticking to some sort of doable regimen in small bites and building was a positive thing. And if I could just do that, if I could just make a small change in my routine. And so, of course, that required scheduling. So 
I used to schedule just by going a, a, a week ahead in my note app on my phone, and I'd make a list of the things I had to do each day for that week. And I, you know, I started to fall off and be like, well, I know I'm going to do. I know I'm going to take my daughter to daycare every, you know, however many days or whatever. I know I'm going to do this. So I'm not going to write that down. But I got better about that, and I started keeping a regular schedule. And I would found I found out that I would do the things that I wrote on there because I wanted to cross them off. And then I would sort of enjoy the victory of having accomplished whatever goal it was. Unfortunately, with four kids and a wife that has a really weird work schedule and works a lot and a lot of response, you know, just like anybody else, I had to go in and now I do uh, um, a monthly, daily, by the week Excel spreadsheet that's set up Sunday through Friday and then 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. or whatever. And I actually go in uh, and 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 mark out the things I'm going to do in time blocks. And I found out that if it isn't on there, I'm probably not going to do it. And if it is on there, I probably will do it. And sure enough, some things are just easy to add, like uh, work out. You know, I'm, I know I'm going to work out Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and I'll write that in at 5.30 or whatever, and um, that becomes easier. And then some things, like I want to practice more music or listen to music. And that's hard for me to schedule, and so I often find that when I'm doing my schedule, I'll just write in a three-hour block of fun or creative time. And what happens is I end up wasting that creative time because I don't have it planned out. But now if I go in there and I write, work on this song for 30 minutes, I'll find I'll do it. So I'm learning about myself. I'm saying, I'll do this, I won't do that. This is what it's going to take for to get me to do something. And so I'm just going to surrender and do it that way. Because in the end, I'm the end result is I actually played music for an hour and a half last week versus zero. And that's a huge win. You know, that's a, a massive victory, right? It's, so it's, it's, it's changing the way that I, I look at these things. Um, so I think the most important thing you can possibly do before any of this probably is scheduling, because everybody needs to do that if you don't do that anyway. And then I would say second is meditation. And again, I think the one minute a day, five days a week, or one minute a day, every other day, uh, or three minutes or something, just to build that habit and do that for a month. You know, don't put a time, don't put a time limit on it. You know, at 48 years old, I've realized now, it, on the one hand, we, you know, our days are numbered. We don't have a lot of time. But on the other hand, if you really want to make changes, they've got to be slow and small. And that's the ones that actually are going to work. And in six months, you won't have gone through three iterations of trying and failing. In six months, maybe you'll have a 10-minute, five-day-a-week meditation habit that you find that you can't live without. It, it's so important not to beat yourself up and to set very small and realistic goals. And then after that, after um, scheduling meditation is in journaling. And I, I, I admit, I probably do this three to five days a week. And I really would like to make an effort to do seven. Um, but I, my journal file, I do it on my computer, is is huge. And I've got a year and a half or two years worth of resolution now. Now, granted, it's not every day. There are times when I go a month or two, but I always get back on the wagon or off the wagon. I don't know what that phrase is all about. Um, and I have effectively built a journaling habit. Um, and sometimes it's a minute and sometimes it's you know, three or four pages and I don't have a, a set goal or, t- or amount of words or anything. It's just to do it. And I didn't realize it was going to be so beneficial. And again, like meditation, exercise, journaling, if, if I go a week without doing these things, I don't beat myself up. And in fact, after a few months, I realized that I miss it. And if I don't meditate fairly regularly, I am more irritable. And so if you can push through and give it two or three months, you'll actually see the benefits. It's like everybody always tells you about running. You know, eventually you'll get a runner's high and you'll feel good. And then it'll be easier to go back and do it again because you won't dread it. You'll actually want to do it. So scheduling, meditation, journaling, and then exercise. I said that before. I think that's part of any, you know, even if it's walking to the mailbox and back, Tell yourself, maybe you drive, maybe you get your mail in the car out through window on the way home every day. Change that to, I'm going to drive up, park my car, get out, go in the house, and then come back out and get the mail and go back in. And then mark it off and schedule, you know, journal, you know, whatever. 
and say, I'm doing this. And then that becomes your new habit. And now say, maybe I'm going to walk around the block once before I get the mail. And now you've added that. And then maybe three or four months down the road, you go, I'm going to run around the block once, or I'm going to go, whatever. That's how it works. Setting these unrealistic and huge goals about looking like Brad Pitt or only eating, um, you know, vegan shakes or uh, meditating for 45 minutes twice a day, you know, that isn't how, that's not how humans work. And comparing yourself to that sort of standard is not going to produce the results you want. Um, And then the last one that's really hard for me to do are daily affirmations. But after plowing through the Ruiz books, Don Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements, Jose uh, Ruiz, The Fifth Agreement, um, the, all, and, 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 and Miguel Ruiz Jr., all those books are gold mines. I read them twice over the last 10 years since they've come out, and they didn't do a whole lot for me. People have mentioned, maybe you need to go back and visit these things. And I did with a sort of indifferent mindset. And I'm now more open to the ideas that are suggested in there. Uh, and, I, and I'll probably dedicate parts of episodes and, and use this because it's, I've now sort of incorporated these ideas um, into my daily thinking. But the thing that really I found I was missing from all that is the daily affirmations. You know, Jose and Miguel and Miguel Jr., they all say we are perfect beings. We are God. We are connected and all is one. And part of their daily affirmation routine is to remind yourself of that. It's to wake up and say that you are perfect um, and you are fallible and all these other things too, uh, but you are the opposite of not good enough, right? And so I guess your daily affirmations sort of will reflect what your issues are, but a big one of mine is I'm just not good enough, I don't deserve these things, um, success is for other people, whatever. And so I, I am in the process of figuring out ways to develop some affirmations that will assess, address my issues and then to get in the habit of actually speaking these out loud every day to see if that has any difference. Because I can tell you, journaling, meditation, exercise, scheduling have all had dramatic influences on my life. And I'm not saying I can fly now or that I have superpowers, but I feel like this toolkit is allowing me to better meet my personal growth goals. Even though I'm not an expert, an overachiever, or super good and dedicated at any of these things. But I have made incremental changes. I've learned to reward myself for that by or celebrate being able to do that and find some um, power in the success of achieving those things. And now I'm starting to believe that I can actually do that. And all of that has to do with acting. I'm even to the point where I'm starting to think I need to stop reading. I bet I read two or three books a week, all in the nonfiction genre of, you know, the self-help philosophy, personal growth, what used to be called new age, maybe, um, category, things like solo money and the four agreements and, um, yeah, yeah, personal growth books for what? I feel good about it. A lot of it is ethnocentric reaffirmations of seeing things written that I believe. Um, But, you know, that'll only get you so far. And that's important, and I think it's something we need to do. But the point is, I'm actually considering trying to make a concerted effort to do less of that (laughs) to make more room um, for action. Instead of reading 10 pages of a book and falling asleep at night, maybe I'll add meditation or gratitude or something like that, or or affirmations, whatever. Um, Something that I'm actually doing. Because doing is what's going to produce the results. I don't know that you can start the doing without some fundamental understanding of the underlying reasons and theory behind it. But I'm starting to believe that doing is probably more important than, than 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 the intellectual part. But that's my own personal thing. All I'm suggesting is that if you are a person like me, and you believe that you can change your thoughts by changing your thinking, I'm here to share with you, if you haven't heard so f- this before, that that's probably not going to work, or it's a lot harder. And the better way, or at least what people say, and I'm living evidence of that, is you change your thoughts by changing your actions. And 
by addressing your own personal values and beliefs and sort of things that you need to address so you can customize it. And then by scheduling, journaling, meditating, exercising, and uh, doing daily affirmations. I think that is a powerful, simple, hard to do, easy to talk about, but, but simple way and can all be achieved in an hour a day. And that's if you're adding exercise. If you take exercise out, you can probably do all these things in 15 or 20 minutes. But maybe you can incorporate them into what you're doing already. And that's another thing that James Clear talks about is habit stacking. Maybe you get up in the morning and you brush your teeth. Well, maybe you can get up in the morning, brush your teeth, and refer to your list of daily affirmations that are on your mirror and say those things out loud after you finish or before you brush your teeth, something like that. So you're adding these things. And all of these things are awesome and stackable. Uh, last thing I'll say for an example is when I journal, I tend to uh, try to do a, a gratitude and affirmation exercise in the beginning of my journaling. And then also sort of sometimes, not always, we'll, we'll sort of think ahead to my day and write down my thoughts about what I'm going to do or what I need to do. So, I mean, all these things sort of combine uh, and work as a, as a little team <laughs> uh, for your um, mind-body unification. So that's episode 47, Knowledge Plus Experience Equals Wisdom, about changing behavior to change beliefs. And I hope you found some something useful in it. And uh, if you're in the process of doing these things, I encourage you to keep at it and uh, share your personal victories. Uh, I'd like to hear about them, and I'm available. So anyway, next week will be another Curiosity interview series release. I think I'm going to do nine, unless I can line up a tenth. That'll go on for two more times. That'll be number eight. And then the week after that, episode 48, building up on our way to episode 50 and some dramatic changes here at Knowledge Plus Experience Equals Wisdom. Thanks, guys. 